you'll learn about different types of firewalls. These include hardware, software, and cloud-based firewalls. You'll also learn the difference between a stateless and stateful firewall and cover some of the basic operations that a firewall performs. Finally, you'll explore how proxy servers are used to add a layer of security to the network. A firewall is a network security device that monitors traffic to and from your network. It either allows traffic or it blocks it based on a defined set of security rules. A firewall can use port filtering, which blocks or allows certain port numbers to limit unwanted communication. For example, it could have a rule that only allows communications on port 443 for HTTPS or port 25 for email and blocks everything else. These firewall settings would be determined by the organization's security policy. Let's talk about a few different kinds of firewalls. A hardware firewall is considered the most basic way to defend against threats to a network. A hardware firewall inspects each data packet before it's allowed to enter the network. A software firewall performs the same functions as a hardware firewall, but it's not a physical device. Instead, it's a software program installed on a computer or on a server. If the software firewall is installed on a computer, it will analyze all the traffic received by that computer. If the software firewall is installed on a server, it will protect all the devices connected to the server. A software firewall typically costs less than purchasing a separate physical device, and it doesn't take up any extra space. But because it is a software program, it will add some processing burden to the individual devices. Organizations may choose to use a cloud-based firewall. Cloud service providers offer firewalls as a service, or FAAS, for organizations. Cloud-based firewalls are software firewalls hosted by a cloud service provider. Organizations can configure the firewall rules on the cloud service provider's interface, and the firewall will perform security operations on all incoming traffic before it reaches the organization's on-site network. Cloud-based firewalls also protect any assets or processes that an organization might be using in the cloud. All the firewalls we have discussed can be either stateful or stateless. The terms stateful and stateless refer to how the firewall operates. Stateful refers to a class of firewall that keeps track of information passing through it and proactively filters out threats. A stateful firewall analyzes network traffic for characteristics and behavior that appear suspicious and stops them from entering the network. Stateless refers to a class of firewall that operates based on predefined rules and does not keep track of information from data packets. A stateless firewall only acts according to pre-configured rules set by the firewall administrator. The rules programmed by the firewall administrator tell the device what to accept and what to reject. A stateless firewall doesn't store or analyze information. It also doesn't discover suspicious trends like a stateful firewall does. For this reason, stateless firewalls are considered less secure than stateful firewalls. A next generation firewall, or NGFW, provides even more security than a stateful firewall. Not only does an NGFW provide stateful inspection of incoming and outgoing traffic, but it also performs more in-depth security functions like deep packet inspection and intrusion protection. Some NGFWs connect to cloud-based threat intelligence services so they can quickly update to protect against emerging cyber threats. Now you have a basic understanding of firewalls and how they work. We learned that firewalls can be hardware or software. We also discussed the difference between a stateless and stateful firewall and the security benefits of a stateful firewall. Finally, we discuss next generation firewalls and the security benefits they provide. Coming up, we'll learn more about virtual networks. We're going to discuss how virtual private networks, or VPNs, add security to your network. When you connect to the internet, your internet service provider receives your network's requests and forwards it to the correct destination server. But your internet requests include your private information. That means if the traffic gets intercepted, someone could potentially connect your internet activity with your physical location and your personal information. This includes some information that you want to keep private, like bank accounts and credit card numbers. A virtual private network, also known as a VPN, is a network security service that changes your public IP address and hides your virtual location so that you can keep your data private when you're using a public network, like the internet. VPNs also encrypt your data as it travels across the internet to preserve confidentiality. A VPN service performs encapsulation on your data in transit. Encapsulation is a process performed by a VPN service that protects your data by wrapping sensitive data in other data packets. Previously, 
you learn how the MAC and IP address of the destination device is contained in the header and footer of a data packet. This is a security threat because it shows the IP and virtual location of your private network. You could secure a data packet by encrypting it to make sure your information can't be deciphered, but then network routers won't be able to read the IP and MAC address to know where to send it to. This means you won't be able to connect to the internet site or the service that you want. Encapsulation solves this problem while still maintaining your privacy. VPN services encrypt your data packets and encapsulate them in other data packets that the routers can read. This allows your network requests to reach their destination, but still encrypts your personal data so it's unreadable while in transit. A VPN also uses an encrypted tunnel between your device and the VPN server. The encryption is unhackable without a cryptographic key, so no one can access your data. VPN services are simple and offer significant protection while you're on the internet. With a VPN, you have the added assurance that your data is encrypted, your IP address and virtual location are unreadable to malicious actors. We'll discuss a type of network security feature called a security zone. Security zones are a segment of a network that protects the internal network from the internet. They are part of the security technique called network segmentation. It divides the network into segments. Each network segment has its own access permissions and security rules. Security zones control who can access different segments of a network. Security zones act as a barrier to internal networks, maintain privacy within corporate groups, and prevent issues from spreading to the whole network. One example of network segmentation is a hotel that offers free public Wi-Fi. The unsecured guest network is kept separate from another encrypted network used by the hotel staff. Additionally, an organization's network can be divided into subnetworks or subnets to maintain privacy for each department in an organization. For instance, at a university, there may be a faculty subnet and a separate student subnet. If there is contamination on the student subnet, network administrators can isolate it and keep the rest of the network free from contamination. An organization's network is classified into two types of security zones. First, there is the uncontrolled zone, which is any network outside the organization's control, like the internet. Then there's the controlled zone, which is a subnet that protects the internal network from the uncontrolled zone. There are several types of network within the controlled zone. On the outer layer is the demilitarized zone, or DMZ, which contains public-facing services that can access the internet. This includes web servers, proxy servers that host websites for the public, and DNS servers that provide IP addresses for internet users. It also includes email and file servers that handle external communications. The DMZ acts as a network perimeter to the internal network. The internal network contains private servers and data that the organization needs to protect. Inside the internal network is another zone called the restricted zone. The restricted zone protects highly confidential information that is only accessible to employees with certain privileges. Now let's try to picture these security zones. Ideally, the DMZ is situated between two firewalls. One of them filters traffic outside the DMZ and one of them filters traffic entering the internal network. This protects the internal network with several lines of defense. If there's a restricted zone, that too would be protected with another firewall. This way, attacks that penetrate into the DMZ network cannot spread to the internal network and attacks that penetrate the internal network cannot access the restricted zone. As a security analyst, you may be responsible for regulating access control policies on these firewalls. Security teams can control traffic reaching the DMZ and the internal network by restricting IPs and ports. For example, an analyst may ensure that only HTTPS traffic is allowed to access web servers in the DMZ. Security zones are an important part of securing networks, especially at large organizations. Understanding how they are used is essential for all security analysts. 